Well, good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, it is great to be at the university, and it's great to see such a wonderful turnout today. Um, we have a number of distinguished awards that we're going to be giving today, as well as hearing from a number of campus representatives. Um, so we'll begin right away with our program. First, I'd like to welcome a few guests that are with us today. Um, we have from our Alumni Association, Mr. Chad Coker, who is president of our National Alumni Association. Chad, would you please stand? Thank you. We also have Mandy White, who's the District 6 Vice President of the National Alumni Association. Amanda, would you, Mandy, would you please stand? And finally, we have Calvin Brown, who is Director of our Alumni Affairs here at the University. We certainly appreciate all that you do for the University of Alabama in the many, many different ways that you serve us. I think y'all have other full-time jobs of our volunteers, and y'all are always here, and, uh, and it's, great, uh, it's great to have such supportive people like you all. I know that many of you in this room are faculty members and advisors, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to recognize some teaching and service awards, which, which map to certainly two of our three missional tenets of the university, which really focuses on the commitment to our students in our day-to-day -day activities, and certainly it's essential to their success and to our success as an institution, mentoring them, teaching them, and making sure that they're on track to graduate. I got a chance to visit with uh, a class today. I told them to be sure and go to class, <laughs> do their homework. That includes the extra problems at the end of the chapter, and be prepared for tests. And they all assured me that's exactly what they were doing. <laughs> well, today we have a few awards to announce and uh, which will honor several of our exceptional faculty members, our advisors and staff. The first of these are the Outstanding Commitment to Teaching Award and we've asked Mrs. Wyatt to please present these. Please welcome her to the stage. Mandy. Good afternoon. I'm Mandy Wyatt and it's been an honor to be on the OCTA Selection Committee for the past two years. Um, we have faculty, um, staff and students nominate members of the faculty and we have student representatives as well as alumni staff and board members from the National Alumni Association who review all these wonderful staff members and faculty members and um, it's quite a hard decision but today we have four that we really want to take the time to honor today. So on behalf of the nearly 200,000 alumni and friends of the University of Alabama Please join me in recognizing these 2017 Outstanding Commitment to Teacher Awards. The first is Dr. Daniel G. Bachrock from the Culver House College of Commerce. <laughs> Dr. Bachrock earned his bachelor's degree in psychology from Bates College, his master's degree in industrial organization psychology from the University of Wisconsin, and his PhD in organizational behavior and human, human resources from Indiana University. He, enjo he um, joined the University of Alabama in 2002. He's been promoted to full-time professor in 2014. His primary teaching responsibility is the Introduction to Management course, but he's developed three management courses since he's been here. He serves on the editorial boards of two of his field's leading journals, the Journal of Applied Psychology and the Journal of Organizational Behavior. So congratulations, Dr. Bachman. Thank you very much. Dr. James Hubner. Dr. Hubner earned his bachelor's and master's degree from the University of Florida and received his PhD in aerospace engineering from Georgia Tech. He joined the capstone in 2005 and serves as, as an associate professor in the Department of Aerospace Engineering and Mechanics. His research interests include experimental aerodynamics and solid mechanics. He has been in the principal he's been the principal investigator on more than 25 research projects funded by the government. So congratulations, Dr. Hubner. Dr. Ricks earned his bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the University of Alabama and his master's degree and PhD in computer engineering from UAH. 
He currently serves as an associate professor and the assistant department head in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering here at the university. Prior to joining us at the capstone, Dr. Ricks worked for NASA at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, where he developed real-time simulations of several NASA vehicles and performed astronaut training in the natural buoyancy simulator. So congratulations, Dr. Ricks. Thank you. Dr. Taylor earned her bachelor's degree in English at the University of Alabama and her MD from the direct the MD from the University of Alabama School of Medicine in 2004. She then completed her pediatric residency at Cincinnati's Children's, Hosp Children's Hospital in Cincinnati, Ohio. She joined us here at the Capstone in 2007 as an Associate Professor of Pediatrics in the College of Community Health Sciences. She's a board certified general pediatrician with a clinical practice at the University Medical Center. So congratulations, Dr. Taylor. Thank you, Mandy, and again, my congratulations to all of our honorees. Thank you for your commitment to excellence in teaching and engaging with our students. The next set of awards are our Outstanding Commitment to Advising Awards. Please help me welcome Allison Jarnigan, Director of Student Services and Registrar of the College of Communications and Information Sciences, as well as President of the University of Alabama Academic Advisors Association to the stage to present the awards. Allison. You know, academic advising is oftentimes more than just course scheduling. We're looked to be advisors, mentors, sometimes parents away from home for students as they kind of transition through the challenges of becoming adults. Um, so the University of Alabama Academic Advisors Association sends a call out every year um, to young alumni, faculty, staff, and other advisors asking for students to nominate their outstanding advisors from the previous year. This year we had two winners. Um, the nominees are elected by the University of Alabama Academic Advising Association by, based on the nominations. And we, have, we always award one professional advisor and one faculty advisor this award. So this year's winners are uh, our faculty advisor award goes to Dr. Jim Gleason. He's a professor of mathematics with the College of Arts and Sciences. And then the award that goes to our professional advisor has been awarded to Ashley Newsom. She's a professional advisor with the College of Engineering. Thank you, Allison. Congratulations to Jim and Ashley. We certainly thank you for your commitment to our students. In addition to faculty advisors, we have a wonderful staff who serve our students and the university every day. And to recognize a few teams who provide extraordinary service each year, we honor them with recipients of the Sam S. May Commitment to Service Awards. Please welcome Provost Kevin Whitaker as he presents these awards. Thank you. It's great to be here this afternoon. Uh, we have a number of awards to present, so let me dive right in. I certainly have the pleasure of presenting the Sam S. May Commitment to Service Award. This is named for a remarkable staff member from the Department of Chemistry who filled his career tutoring generations of students. The Sam S. May Award recognizes a department, office, team, or center that provides exceptional service through commitment, innovation, creativity, and continuous improvement in customer relations. We have a number of recipients today. When I announce your team, please stand to be recognized. Our first recipient is the Educational Technology Web and Editorial Team in the College of Arts and Sciences. This team has worked hard over the last five years to respond to the Dean's request to update all of the websites for the college. Nominators mention the team's reliability and their commitment to their customers, stating that they go above and beyond consistently never complaining and always performing their jobs with passion, professionalism, and enthusiasm. So please stand. <laughs> Our next recipient is the Crossroads Community Engagement Center. Crossroads has been committed to engaging our campus with the community by hosting workshops 
and other events for students, faculty, staff, and partners around the state and the region to spur meaningful dialogue. They generate innovative programming to promote engagement that is intercultural, helping to cultivate an environment for everyone that is inclusive and diverse. Nominators remarked on their uncanny ability to make everyone who walks through their door feel valued and respected. Please stand. Congratulations to your team and thank you for the commitment you give to our students and our community. Next to be recognized as a recipient is the UAPD Community Oriented Police Division. The COP division has significantly increased the numbers of students, faculty, and staff they directly engage with positive programming over the last year. For the last academic year, they conducted over 180 safety programs that reached over 13,000 members of the UA family. In addition to investigating crimes, they spend thousands of hours walking the residence halls to ensure student safety. They taught women's self-defense classes to students, faculty, and staff, and they spend time weekly reading books to children at the RISE Center and the CDRC. They partner with multiple divisions on campus as well as off-campus businesses to provide entertaining and educational programs to our students, cultivating a positive relationship with the community. So if I could get them to stand, please. The fourth recipient of the award for this year is the Alabama Innovation and Mentoring Entrepreneur Center. The AIM Center provides proof of concept assistance, prototyping surface and commercialization or entrepreneurship training to campus. They have organized various programs to help ensure proper support for faculty, staff, and student business ideas. They have promoted intellectual property generation, patent application, funding applications, and business startups in the UA community. They brought the university national attention through grant awards and have partnered with the National Science Foundation in several initiatives. We applaud their success and appreciate their contributions to the university and the economic development of our area. So please stand. Our final recipient of the Sam S. May Award is the Online Wellness Portal Team. The Online Wellness Portal is a tool that benefits each and every faculty and staff member at the university. The Portal Team has worked tirelessly to ensure efficiency and functionality of the site for all employees. Because of their work, the Office of Health Promotion and Wellness has been able to offer quality programming to a variety of interests from employees at the university. Their nominators mentioned their dedication to exceptional customer service while they keep UA up to date with technology changes for their products. If you'll please stand. Thank you, Kevin. Um, it is now my pleasure to introduce the presidents of our various organizations on campus. And to begin with, we'll hear from our faculty, Senate President uh, Donna Meester. Donna. Thank you, Dr. Bell. This will likely be the last time that I have the honor to address you, the faculty and the staff, as the capacity in the capacity of the faculty senate president. These past three years certainly have been a whirlwind and very rewarding experience. But for now, I'm going to focus on what the faculty senate has been doing this past year. Our relationships with the faculty senates at UAB and UAH continue to grow. Last spring, Chancellor Hayes addressed the group and emphasized his desire to see the three senates working together. The discussion at this meeting explored the possibilities, including a system-wide daycare and partnerships from the three campuses. What began as a thought, bringing the three groups together, is blossoming, blossoming into what looks to be a very exciting and rewarding endeavor. We will be meeting again following the Board of Trustees in November. We, yeah, something's funky. There's a mute button right there. You're pressing down. Oh. Sorry. It was nothing important. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. 
We are cautiously seeing the light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to the faculty handbook update. This committee continues to meet regularly with a typical meeting lasting about three hours. The biggest challenge has been updating the mediation and grievance information and procedures. This has recently been completed and is currently waiting to be approved by the Senate before moving forward and incorporating it into the handbook. The proposed updates were sent to the faculty this past week and we invite all faculty to attend our meeting at 3.30 this afternoon, 3 o'clock this afternoon to participate no, it's 3.30. Um, to participate in the discussion before it goes to a vote in the Senate next month. While we are updating information, we are also making it a bit more user-friendly with the inclusion of links to this information rather than having all the pages um, of paperwork to be going through. As I last reported, that we, along with other groups, um, have been working on creating a nonprofit SANE sexual assault nurse examiner program. And you may be aware that this has finally come to fruition. We are working with Kathleen Kramer, who is the project manager for this newly minted SAFE program, Sexual Assault Forensic Examiners Program, to continue this important project process. We are charged by Provost Whitaker to clean up the campus-wide um, standing committees. This included making sure all named committees were active and needed and had a clear charge, as well as identifying areas that may need a new committee. In the process, it was discovered that the Environmental Stewardship Committee had been frozen, and it may be time to thaw this out, as well as develop a current charge for that committee. We've also been asked to review the application um, for sabbatical leave. We'll be doing this um, in more detail before next year's deadline. Um, the Faculty Senate has also taken on the responsibility of identifying faculty who are deserving of the honor of serving as the commencement marshal. We recently sent out nomination forms to the entire faculty and had a fabulous response. The soon, Senate will soon be reviewing these nominations and we'll be voting for four honorees um, for the next seven commencement exercises. In a related matter, the Karen Steckel Regalia Loan Program is busting at the seams, literally. Um, it's a great problem to have. Faculty who do not have graduation regalia can contact Linda Knowles to borrow um, regalia if they wish to attend the ceremonies. Almost all of the robes were loaned out last spring. The only ones that weren't were those that weren't in great shape or just some weird size. Um, and I'd like to thank Registrar Ken Foshi, who recently donated um, about 12 more gowns and tams. We're always accepting donations to this program and we're especially in need of TAM. So if anybody or if you know if people have them, um, let us know and contact Linda. Uh, these are just a few of the projects and concerns the Faculty Senate has recently be, um, been involved in. For more information in these, as well as all the other activities the Senate um, is working on, uh, all that information is found on our website, including notes and um, minutes of meetings and upcoming meetings and who the speakers are gonna be. We have a great slate of speakers in fact, this afternoon, Chancellor Hayes will be addressing the Senate. Um, as a Senate, we have had many accomplishments this past year and look forward to many more in the year ahead. We are interested in helping Chancellor Hayes in his quest to see the three campuses in the UA system working together. And we're always working towards the betterment of our UA family, of faculty, staff, and students. And we continue to do this as we keep um, the four pillars of President Bell's strategic plan as a map to do this. Faculty Senate meetings are open to the public and we invite you to attend. Our website will tell you um, that they are typically on the third Tuesday of the month and you can find out when and where each of those takes place. If you're not able to attend, but have a concern that you would like to see addressed, please email me, let me know what's going on and um, we'll take it to the Senate. We look forward to continued faculty interest and participation in our Senate. And thank you and roll time. And now we will hear from our professional staff assembly. Please welcome Robert Baxter. Hello, I'm Robert Baxter, professional staff assembly president. I work in the Division of Financial Affairs IT. Good afternoon faculty, staff, and community members. On behalf of the professional staff assembly, thank you President Bell for the opportunity to report on the accomplishments of the PSA over the summer and into the fall semester. The PSA has accomplished much since I last spoke with you in the spring. Campus address. Our newly elected and returning members have made great strides with our community goals for the 2017-2018 term. It is my honor to serve as the President of the Professional Staff Assembly for the academic year. The PSA is an elected body of professional staff from all areas of the university. Our members serve on seven PSA committees 
and 17 standing committees on campus, including the faculty senate and office of clerical staff, office of clerical technical staff assembly. This provides for our assembly members' commitment to address the needs of the staff, listen to concerns, and share knowledge to the professional staff on campus. Our goal is to collectively, as a group, move the University of Alabama forward with our commitment to success as an educational institution that attracts the best and brightest staff, faculty, and students. The efforts by our officers, committee chairs, and assembly members show great returns as we make progress to our goals this academic year. This progress will help to improve the PSA, provide benefit to the US, to the UA campus and Tuscaloosa community. The service and outreach community, community committee, sorry, co-chaired by Daphne Wright and Julie Elmore, who started the fall 2000 semester strong. Assembly members have volunteered 195 hours since April. This includes the Brewer Porch Children's Center Easter activities, UA move-in, UA week of welcome, and Habitat for Humanity. The committee is currently raising money for our annual sponsorship of Brewer Porch Children's Center Christmas Fund and upcoming programs. The Professional Development Committee and their chair, Ben Bickerstaff, have begun the fall semester reviewing applications for our Mark G. Foster Scholarship. I am pleased to announce the committee awarded the scholarship to Jennifer Patrick, contract administrator with contract administration. This will help her in pursuit of an undergraduate degree in accounting. The committee is also looking at professional development opportunities for staff, professional opportunities for staff on campus, including traditional and online options. Our committee and public relations committee, chaired by Jessica Aguilar, is working to communicate with professional staff and assembly members. The committee works to share the information with the PSA members on our monthly progress. They also review our social media presence and ways to engage more, encourage more engagement from our professional staff. Our Assembly Operations Committee, chaired by Lynn Hurd, works to interpret our bylaws and recommend changes. One such change was to include the new employee class within UA, professional non-exempt. To allow our Assembly to continue to represent this new employee class, we voted in a change to our bylaws in September meeting. The Staff Life Committee, chaired by Jackie Northrup, continues to look at staff benefits. This committee has proposed a policy for a summer flex schedule and a resolution in support of this. This is to bring us in line a little more with some of the other campuses uh, in the UA system that do have a similar policy. The committee is also writing resolutions in support of the recommendations from the Faculty and Staff Benefits Committee, including a two-week paid parental leave policy and an on-campus child care. The Technology Committee, chaired by Jason Miller, maintains the PSA web presence and reviews our use of technology. The committee works to maintain the accuracy of our PSA website, psa.ua.edu. It also is working on a charge for better handling digital communications within our assembly. This includes a way PSA can hold online meetings and how to retain the minutes for those. The Nominations and Election Committee, chaired by Holly Graff, has taken on additional responsibilities. They have worked with myself to find replacements, assembly members, for those who have left UA, retired, or stepped down. They are also preparing and compiling employee contact information for our upcoming elections in March. During the fall semester, PSA has been joined by three guest speakers. At our August meeting, we heard from Dr. Kevin Whitaker with a brief rundown of the strategic plan for UA. His speech included UA's commitment to hiring new faculty and increasing research opportunities to help grow our graduate school in terms of students. Dr. Whitaker introduced to the PSA our new Vice President and Associate Provost for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Dr. Christine Taylor. She proposed to the Assembly that we co-labor to help better prepare students when they graduate and advance into a diversified life beyond the walls of UA. I was able to share with Dr. Taylor our PSA Diversity and Inclusion Resolution passed in January this year to confirm our Assembly's commitment to support and advance a culture of inclusivity at the University of Alabama. Our September speaker was Andy Rainey with Strategic Communications. He presented to our Assembly's new, he presented to our Assembly UA's new content management system, OU Campus. This provided great information about UA's change to a new website management tool for all colleges and departments on campus. I have recently created an ad hoc committee to rewrite our PSA bylaws. This is to update our bylaws to meet the needs of our assembly, changes within the professional staff, and changes to our digital world. Our past president, Daryl Hargraves, will chair this committee. 
A committee to review those changes and a subsequent meeting to re committee to review the spelling and grammar of those changes will follow this. At our September steering committee meeting, we discussed the creation of a resolution in support of Domestic Violence Awareness Fund. This resolution, written by Jackie Northup, was read to the assembly and passed by unanimous vote. It recognizes the important work done by domestic violence programs and the month of October as National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. The resolution urges all PSA members and the larger University of Alabama community to actively participate in the scheduled activities and programs to work toward improving victim safety and holding perpetrators of domestic abuse accountable for their actions against individual victims and our society as a whole. This is the reason I am wearing this purple ribbon today to support mourning, to support mourning those who have died because of, celebrating those who have survived, and connecting those who have who work to end domestic violence. And if any of those are any of you are interested, there are more outside of you need on the tables. I want to thank the PSA officers and each of the committee chairs for their leadership and commitment they have shown to the PSA. I'm very proud of the work our membership has done to start the fall semester for the professional staff at UA. The PSA will continue to build on our previous accomplishments throughout the 2017-2018 year. On behalf of the PSA members, I would like to thank Dr. Bell, Dr. Whitaker, and Dr. Gilbert for their continued generous support of our organization. I look forward to the remainder of my term as president and appreciate the opportunity to address you today. Thank you for your time. It's now my pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Jesse Richardson from our Office of Clerical Technical Staff Assembly and uh, some things she has to share for us. Come on up, Jesse. There are a lot of you. Um, the OCT Staff Assembly represents the Office Clerical Technical Staff of the University of Alabama and serves as an advisory and policy referral organization to administration. We have five committees to address the concerns of staff that includes communications and public relations, staff life, service and outreach, professional development, and then our newest one to tell you about is membership. OCTSA also has representatives on the University Section 1 committees. The Communication and Public Relations Committee compiled our second year in review document highlighting our guest speakers, special projects, and accomplishments for this past 2016-2017 year. We've increased our membership by 50%, participated in several drafts, and have donated time to several local organizations. The Staff Life Committee has continued to review policies that affect our staff and has worked closely with human resources and other appropriate departments and committees to be a voice for our representatives. Our assembly voted to support the faculty and staff uh, benefit committee's recommendations for paid parental leave and the recommendation for additional child care options in our September meeting and our steering committee is drafting those resolutions of support to go before our assembly. The Service and Outreach Committee has worked with Alabama Adopt-A-Mile program to adopt a mile between mile marker 87 and 88 on University Boulevard. And we are very pleased to announce that the sign is now up. You can see us coming or going. So uh, we will be sending out more information um, to schedule cleanup opportunities very soon. We will continue to partner with Alabama Reach by supplying um, their pantry items throughout the year and then gift cards around the holidays. The Professional Development Committee has worked with HR this past year to review and provide feedback on current university courses available through Skillport and make recommendations for any other useful offerings for our staff. Additionally, this committee coordinates our outstanding staff award that's presented to two office clerical and technical staff members to recognize exceptional job performance and a strong spirit of service. And these, um, these are held in May. The membership committee is our newest committee. Um, with additional interest in, in OCTSA membership, we would like to review and revise our membership bylaws to best meet the needs of our staff. The committee can also serve to greet new members and connect them with our committees and projects of interest to them. Finally, um, OCTSA is sharing a survey with members and uh, both with members and other non-exempt staff across campus to gather data and feedback that will help guide our committees in planning and initiatives for the upcoming year. 
That will go out today and it will close on Friday, November 3rd. We are pleased to represent a portion of the university staff and look forward to a great 2017-2018 year. Thank you and roll tide. Our final speaker today will uh, be our representative, our students, who represents a little over 38,000 of our constituents within our community. Please join me in welcoming our Student Government Association President, Jared Hunter. Jared. Good afternoon. Since I was last year in the spring, I talked a little bit about how I wanted my administration to put the action back in SGA. Since 1914, the Student Government Association has served as the preeminent example of student governance in a collegiate environment. From working with the administration and athletics to determine student organization seating in Bryant-Denny, to helping students find appropriate parking on campus based on where they live and where they're going, RESGA has a storied history of constantly pursuing our mantra, students serving students. But we can do more. I've lived in the South almost all my life, growing up in the small town of Witsumpka in Elmore County and going to school in Montgomery. My 11th grade history teacher was everything you'd expect, witty, goofy, and absolutely obsessed with US history. He would constantly remind us of his favorite call to action, always improve. That idea that Dr. McLemore constantly posited has followed with me through my academic career and has undeniably influenced how the Hunter administration has approached our chance at running the SGA. So, though we work on block seating and parking partner and homecoming and many other important programs, I wanted to do more. And I'm excited to say we are. Vice President of External Affairs Price McGifford has worked with Dr. Lim Linda Gilbert from Financial Affairs since the summer to open the Robert E. Witt Student Activity Center earlier so students that have early classes or work can still maintain their physical health. While focused in the residential campus, the newly expanded hours will surely afford students across the capstone greater access to our workout facilities here on campus. Dining Dollars has successfully been expanded to two of the food trucks on campus, Local Roots and Snowco. Both, both have been incredibly popular food options for students and will hopefully inspire other dining options to begin accepting Dining Dollars. In fact, today SGA is hosting our first annual food truck festival from 5 to 8 on the Strip with a portion of the proceeds going to fund the SGA Needs Pay Scholarship. Spurred from a recently relaxed and very successful fireside chat organized by Dr. Bell and Dr. Grady, I, along with leaders from the Black Student Union, Athletics, Culver House Investment Management Group, Interfraternity Council, Alabama Panhellenic Association, and others are meeting Thursday to discuss what we as a campus can do to extend a helping hand to communities across the country and the world. From Las Vegas, Puerto Rico, to the recent attack in Somalia, I look forward to collaborating across campus organizations to do our part in mending a torn world by planning a campus-wide fundraiser or philanthropic effort. One of the most pressing issues facing students today is depression and anxiety, as highlighted in a recent New York Times article. From that article, in 2016, an annual survey of students was taken by the American College Health Association, and they found that 62% of respondents reported experiencing, quote, overwhelming anxiety. On campus, resources at the Counseling Center and Women, Gender, Women and Gender Resource Center are available for all students that need mental health care and services. But like I said earlier, I wanted to do more. And I'm more than happy to announce that in a major collaboration with student leaders from IFC, Panhellenic, and CIMG, along with faculty like Dr. Perez of Student Health and Wellbeing and Dr. Amy Trailer of Faculty Senate, SGA has created the RESPECT Fund. RESPECT is an acronym standing for Reaching Every Student Possible, Ensuring Care and Treatment, and will act as an endowed trust fund that anyone and everyone can donate to. We've currently raised $75,000 for the fund, 
and I'm excited to see that number grow as other organizations and private donors contribute. The money will be used to bolster services and care provided through student health and well-being, intended to expand access for all students at UA. Life at times can be pretty scary and lonely. SGA wants to make sure everyone, regardless of creed, background, race, or ethnicity, has access to the care they need while as a student here at the University of Alabama. And with that being said, we realize we're not perfect. As my 11th grade teacher encouraged years ago, SGA is striving to improve always. There is absolutely ways our organization can get even better, and I welcome those critiques and comments openly. But I'm incredibly proud of the hard work we've done so far. We have some of the most diligent, concerned students serving on behalf of the UA family. This week it's our award-winning programming, It's On Us. And I can't wait to share what we accomplish next. Thank you for the opportunity to stand here today. God bless, and of course, hold tight. Well, thank you, Jared, uh, Donna, Bob, Jesse, uh, for all that you do every day, every week. Um, we're honored to have such great leaders with servant hearts uh, here at the University of Alabama. And good afternoon uh, again to everyone. Thank you all for being here. This is one of my favorite times, I think, of the year to hear about these awards, to hear from the leadership, so many of our staff and our faculty who give of their time over and over again. Uh, many of you have uh, perhaps uh, are here for the first time. Others of you have never missed a faculty staff assembly, but Whatever that uh, case is for you, I appreciate your interest, your engagement, and your willingness to give such an active part of your life to this vital, vital role that we have at the university. When we came together last fall, we talked about our new strategic plan, and I continued that conversation into the spring. Today, what I'd like to do is to take a few minutes and pull together those conversations and to paint a picture of our great university today, but also what it will be for the future. And whether we think of ourselves as the canvas, or whether we think of ourselves as the paint, or the painter, I think the important part is that each one of us plays a significant role, and that painting starts with us. Because without exceptional faculty, without exceptional staff and students, all of you, quite frankly, we would not be the great University of Alabama that we are. And it is that greatness you all that uh, drew Susan and I back uh, to the University of Alabama after being away for a short uh, few years. Uh, but again, we could not be more excited to continue to call the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa our home. Without a doubt, you are what makes this place a very special place at the university. And our success is painted one stroke at a time, one day at a time, when you come to your jobs, you help our students succeed, you work on that next performance, write that next research proposal, submit that paper, sorry if it's due and I just reminded you about it. Or as you welcome our next freshman class, each new doctoral student who comes here, or perhaps that postdoctoral student that you're hiring to work on part of your program. As you move through your daily activities, you encourage one another, your colleagues, and our students to success. Stories are often written about our researchers who explore in their laboratories and they make new discoveries, or about our faculty who receive accolades, or our students who receive national honors. Those who perform at the highest levels on the field, on the court, in the classroom or on the stage. As I move through our community, through the state, through the nation, I'm reminded everywhere I go of the role that each of us, of each of you, have on our campus and its success. Students like to tell me the stories of their favorite professors who helped them to solve a problem, or an administrator who gave them special encouragement, or helped them land that new job. Faculty tell me about collaborators that they have with their colleagues here and across the globe and our students who are excelling in their laboratories. 
And even those who visit our campus are quick to remind me of what a welcoming and beautiful place that our campus and this university is. Let me share with you an email that I received from a Colorado State fan right after the CSU game, and she writes, Hello, I just wanted to relate to you my experience at the big game in Alabama this past weekend. It was a big game for CSU. <laughs> after much deliberation, the four in our group decided to attend the long weekend in Alabama with our fellow alums. We stayed in Birmingham as we waited too long to get to book anything in Tuscaloosa. We all know about that. So we drove down early Saturday morning and arrived about 10 a.m. Everyone came in, that we came in contact the entire day became our friend. From the wonderful ladies at the parking lot to the shuttle bus drivers, the students, the parents, the staff, what a fabulous attitude we encountered. We had purchased our parking online several weeks before. You can do that. And we were still amazed at the organization of the university and all things pertaining to this event. We parked in our lot the attendants were already there waiting to receive the fans. We got on a wonderful free shuttle. We went to the quad for a look around the university. There were four other locals on the bus with us. They immediately greeted us by saying, welcome to Alabama. Thanks for coming. Where are you from? Where are you staying? Can we help you with anything? Wow! I did ask the question how the elephant became a mascot and was told both the history of the Crimson Tide and the elephant mascot. One three-person family was there for Parents' Day as well as the game. When we got off the bus, a fourth person waited for us and told us all about the chimes and actually walked us to the chime tower, which was across the tailgating field. She must have spent 20 minutes with us telling us all about the campus. And this was just the tip of the iceberg. It would take me four more pages, of which I'm glad she didn't send. <laughs> Related to the incident of kindness shown while we were on your campus. And as we waited for the CSU tailgate to begin at 3 o'clock, we were invited to spend the night at someone's home in case we got stuck after the game. <laughs> we were told about the history of the tailgate system, shown the president's home, the elephant topiary, the glorious air-conditioned bathroom facility. What a lifesaver. The humidity was so high. <laughs> the student center, a fabulous student bookstore and boutique, invited to sit in their personal tailgate tents asked if we would like them to take our pictures, offered refreshments, and went on and on both for the game and after the game. I am an Army brat and have lived in many locations across the world, and I can honestly say that I was taken aback by the Southern hospi hospitality that we were shown by everyone whom we came in contact with on that Saturday. They were lovely, caring, sincere people, and the pride of their state and the pride in their school definitely came through. We, are, we seriously did not hear any one negative comment the entire day. We felt overwhelmingly welcome on your campus. So even though I began as a reluctant participant for this trip, I am so happy that I was able to experience it. What a wonderful event. It has left a positive, lasting effect on me about the University of Alabama and the people of Alabama. Thank you and all your staff and workers who make this event a most enjoyable day. Karen from Golden, Colorado. I want to share that with you all just to know I receive these every week. Thank you all for what you do. If you are one of our staff associated with our facilities, our grounds, our shuttles, um, any of those, pro in fact, would all of our staff just stand up so we can recognize them? All the staff, if you are a staff member here. You guys rock. I also want to, and, and Kevin uh, Provost Whitaker did this earlier, but I also want to provide a special thank you for our police department who work every day to keep our campus safe, to keep you and I safe, and I will tell you it is a 24-7 job many times. You know, if we look at the number of students we have, our faculty, our staff, we're a, we're a city of about 50,000 people, and there's a lot of activities that go on every day. If we add fall Saturdays, we invite about another 100,000 of our closest friends to come and join us on campus. And we have an economic impact of about 
twenty million dollars for each home game that we host here. So would our officers please stand? And I know we have some here, but Ronnie, all of you guys, please stand. Ronnie Robertson. Well, we've heard a lot of programs, and every time I hear our faculty and our staff senates and our students, I think there are so many activities, so many programs that we have ongoing. I know in the midst of all those, and if, if you were like me sitting there, you're saying, I'm not sure I knew we had that program. How do I plug in to all the programs that we have? There are so many great things happen. There are so many great individuals behind the scenes that make them happen. But each of you who are sitting in this room know that I know that each one of you are part of an outreach or part of a service function, whether that's in the classroom, in the laboratory, or in many other ways that our universities serve our constituent base. Thank you for what you do, because that's what it's really all about. The future of our university and the 38,000 plus students who are entrusting us with the future. Isn't it wonderful that they continue to come in droves from across our state and truly across the country? And we have the opportunity to educate them, to research with them, to perform with them, and to graduate them, and to help them be successful new entries into our society every day. As you came in this afternoon, um, we were playing a video that showcased many of our outstanding legends that we had, and, and I know we had a lot of uh, conversation going on because we don't get, get together enough uh, that we like to have conversation, but you may have recognized some of them. A few of those may have surprised the impressive group. It's certainly not all of them, but they are making their mark wherever they are across the world but they're also shining a light on the University of Alabama in the process. And that light continues to burn brighter. At the undergraduate level, this year's freshman class is the most academically gifted class we've ever had. And you know, you all heard me say that last year. And it was true last year. Sometimes I say it's the second most, and when I'm speaking to alumni, I tell them that each of your classes were our most. <laughs> But our, our students do continue to amaze us with their credentials. Let me talk about a couple of those. 40.6% scored a 30 or higher on the ACT incoming freshman class. That's a bit higher than last year. More than 38% of them graduated in the top 10% of their high school class. That's a bit higher than it was last year. Over 34% of our freshmen had a GPA of 4.0 or higher. That's a bit higher than it was last year. The average GPA of our incoming freshman class in totality is a 3.72. That's a bit higher than it was last year. You see a thing emerging here. Without a doubt, our recruiters and admissions, and many of those are not here because where are they? Across the world. Without a doubt, they are working tirelessly to bring us the best and the brightest students from across the country. And it's up to us to take those students, to educate them, to retain them, and to graduate them so they can go out and share their talent, their passion, and their intellect with the world. It reminds me of a student whose family moved here from another state, moved actually to Northport, graduated from local high school. She decided to attend UA. She worked a night job as a switchboard operator. You guys know what that is? Some of us do remember that. She graduated from UA and began a career like so many of our students. And it's because of the caring professors, the staff, the administrators like you, that a few weeks ago that student return to campus to give back to the University of Alabama in a remarkable ways. Marilyn Houston, the 1977-79 UA graduate, the student switchboard operator out at Price and worked on the night shift, is now CEO of Lockheed Martin. She's number three on Forbes magazine's most powerful women list in the world. She came to our campus and pledged giving $5 million to the Culver House College 
to continue our ability, your ability, to impact students in the same way that she was impacted when she was here at the University of Alabama. And Marilyn is not the only alumnus who has chosen to give back in a big way this year, perhaps the biggest year, but you'll have to wait for more on that. Just a few months ago, alums Galen and Susan McCulloch gave the College of Arts and Sciences the largest endowment in over 20 years to establish the McCulloch Institute for Pre-Medical Scholars and the Susan McCulloch Art Benali. Mike and Kathy Moran gave so generously so we could build the new adapted athletics facility, and the list goes on. Why do you think we continue to see that trend? It's because you and others before you have given them not only a great education, but also a great experience that they have never forgotten. Your passion for serving students has been contagious to them. And as we talk to these CEOs, it never ceases to amaze me that they first reflect on this staff person did something. This faculty member went out of the way. It's, it occurred 20 years ago, but to them, it's like yesterday. It's like it impacted them, and this is now their chance to give back. I'm not going to spend much time telling you about all the wonderful academic programs, our latest rankings. Uh, that would certainly be like preaching to the choir. Um, you already know about those, but I have heard, would it be nice to have a reference of some of those talking points so when you came in? Um, if you didn't get one of these, be sure you do get one of these. I put together a nice little brochure that highlights some of these talking points, some of these facts about the University of Alabama, and the accomplishments of our staff, our faculty, and students. I hope you will read that. I hope you will share that with your neighbors over the back fence, uh, or maybe neighbors uh, far, far away, perhaps uh, share on social media, but to help us continue to spread the great word of things going on here at the University of Alabama. I also don't have to tell you of all the great improvements that we're making on our facilities. Thank goodness we got University Boulevard open. But you certainly see those as you drive around each day. But I do want to tell you, if you haven't had the opportunity to be on the Bryce campus lately and see the work that's taking place to build a new performing arts academic center, it is definitely worth the look. So is our adapted athletics program that I mentioned earlier and it will open later this fall, early spring. It will be named for Margaret Strand and Brent Harden who are strong advocates who have devoted their lives to so many of our students. New buildings are essentially new buildings that are being built at H.M. Comer, what we over in engineering would call MIB. The new freshman hall by Lakeside, several new Greek houses, the north wing of the Moody Music Building, a new parking deck at Tutwiler, and there's many, many more. And what an amazing transformation Little Hall has undergone. It has a renewed beauty and functionality that will serve the School of Social Work for decades to come. You may not know this, but our School of Social Work is the only freestanding school of social work in the state of Alabama, and that, I think that's a testament that our faculty and our university's commitment of service to our state and to the people of our state. You see, everything that we do, everything that we aspire to do is captured in our strategic plan, advancing the flagship. We launched this last year out of getting input from a broad group of individuals, including all of us in this room. But it is a living, it's a breathing document, and it will continue to evolve and continue to be shaped in the years to come. It's easy to talk about the new faculty that we've added this year, or the institutes that we've created to leverage the strengths in our research, in life research, water, transportation, cybersecurity, all of which provide tremendous impact to our state and our nation. These are all tangible parts of our plan, but what is more important and most important is for all of us to know that we, you, are the critical link and role to moving our university forward in this place that we call home. So whether it's providing a premier educational experience or increasing the discovery, innovation, and research scholarship and creative pursuits, or providing an inclusive, inviting campus, or recruiting and paying the best faculty and staff. You should see yourself in each of these goals because none of these initiatives can succeed without you being in the middle of those. Dreams do not become real without your talent and your commitment.
to our client. I'm proud to work alongside you every day. We've already accomplished so many great things, but even more on the horizon, there is much more that remains to be done. We made strides this fall in growing our graduate enrollment and increasing our research productivity. And the two of those are mutually supportive. We continue to enhance our facilities and hire talented people such as Dr. Christine Taylor, who joined us in August as our Vice President and Associate Provost for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and Dr. Sashi Nabasan, Executive Director of our new Transportation Institute, just to name two of the many who have been hired this year. We have many more important searches underway. It is an incredibly exciting time to be at the University of Alabama. And as I look around this room and I see all of your faces, and I hear about the strong leadership being provided at Faculty Senate, at our Professional Staff Assembly, at our Office Clerical and Technical Staff Assembly, and our Student Government Association, I know the successes that we have today will pale in comparison to what lies before us. With your support and your continued dedication, the University of Alabama will thrive in the years ahead of us because what makes this university so special is all of us and all of us working together. Our best benchmark has always been ourselves, academically and on the field. We continue to refine what we do so well to be even more successful tomorrow than we are today or than we were yesterday. Thank you for everything that you do every day for the University of Alabama to make it a special place that it is and to be in the hearts of so many who pass through. Have a great afternoon and roll time. Thank you.